You ready? It's an A Talks right here. We gon' talk about it right here. We gon' talk about everything you like. I'ma make it real, real clear. It's an A Talks right here. We gon' talk about it right here. I'ma talk about everything you like. I'ma make it real, real clear. Cause it's an A Talk. And I'ma talk about it. Yeah, cause it's an A Talk. And I'ma talk, talk about, about it. it. That that is. Is. Yeah, welcome to Tanae Talks, the podcast that educates and entertains. We have a friend of the show on today. We love to have her. She is a certified public accountant, CEO of Viking Financial Services, graduate of Michigan State University, couldn't do everything right, but that's okay. Graduate of Flint Northern High School. We got Flint on, Atlanta residing, Pamela Valentine. Welcome to the show, Pam. Thank you for having me. And you know, I did everything right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll just let that slide. We, we love having you on the show recently. You were featured in Forbes, Pam. So we know that I think, you know, where the money resides. You, you know, um, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. Go on. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. Okay. Let me tell you something. I'm doing something real big this month. Any deal that y'all got and they beat me. Everybody is trying to know where the money reside, Pam. Everybody in their mama is trying to know where the money resides. So we wanted to have a special show with you today so that you can tell my listeners where the money resides. And today's show is entitled Got the Stimmy, What's Next? Everybody is, and you can, we can see your face now, Pam. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just, I was waiting. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, you look so gorgeous. You look so gorgeous. Um, today's episode is entitled uh, Got the Stimmy, What's Next? A lot of people are wondering where their stimulus checks are. When are they coming? Uh, will it be taxed? They just have all these questions. And so I wanted to talk with a financial expert so that we can help um, our skin folk and our kin folk make some wise financial decisions with that good STEMI. Absolutely. <laughs> so the last time you were on the show, we were both single ladies. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but now... <laughs> it's a fiance's. Fiance's, okay. <laughs> okay. So we really, really, we really need to know where the money resides so we can pay for these shindigs that we have. Right, okay. Let <laughs> Brandon feel, feel it. We gonna have hot and ready's on every table. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I low key believe Brandon. So I want you to be a part of the planning. He needs to step <laughs> aside and go do something. Okay. <laughs> no, it's been good. It's been good. That's wonderful. We love to see it, Pam. So how have you been feeling since the world has been in a shambles? How are you just feeling on a personal level? Girl, it, it's draining. It's infuriating. But, you know, it, it's also, I don't even know the word I'm looking for. Like, that's how I've been lately. It's just flustered because, yeah. you know, it's, it's almost like now the world finally sees what we've been seeing all along. <laughs> okay <laughs> not only covid not only the civil unrest but everything is just bringing out who america is yes <laughs> and you know sometimes I, it makes me giggle sometimes it makes me cry sometimes mm -hmm. it's both you know it's just it's just been difficult and draining at the same time it's it's, it's interesting for sure interesting is definitely a good word for it i've i've had bouts of tears I've definitely been in prayer <laughs> tremendously. You know, yeah. they say we we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against uh, principalities. But these people out here wilding. I got my LTC on deck. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you know, like I'm in Atlanta, so they real crazy here because you have a mixture of 
we real black and you got a mixture of we was a red state now we blue you know i'm just gonna say it (laughs) it's it's a little bit bipolar you know all these years i always feel like black people are on that that episode of the dave Chappelle show when he did the mad real world okay (laughs) when the white boy came and it it was like what is going on but that's how we always feel like Mm -hmm. and now they're finally seeing that we're not crazy yeah for that sure. what we've been saying this whole time is <laughs> what it is yeah. and so um i'm just happy that the the treason that took place happened after them stimmies was processed so <laughs> it's been treason the last four years quite as kept but you know we just gonna move <laughs> on <laughs> like <laughs> we're just gonna move right along fam um, so tell, I, I gave a little introduction of you, but please tell my listeners a little bit more about your background and why you're qualified to give us the financial tips that we're going to learn in the episode. Yeah, sure. So um, thanks for having me again, Pam Valentine, Pam the CPA, went to the Michigan State University. Uh, don't roll your eyes, don't do that. <laughs> so, you know, I've got my bachelor's and master's in accounting, went to work for um, the one of the biggest global accounting firms, works for some Fortune 500 companies. And then I've been the owner of Viking Financial Services or Viking CPA Group for the last seven years now, really servicing small to mid-sized businesses with accounting and taxes, but I also help individuals with taxes as well. So these um, COVID relief funds, the PPP, the EIDL, all of that stuff that's like over $10,000, dollars, 10,000 pages, worth of um, reading material has just been very controversial, very um, interesting to keep up with, but that's kind of what I do as a profession to be able to educate my clients and just the community in general on on what's going on. And things change every day. So even though this podcast is recorded today, (laughs) it might be something different when it airs. It may be something different by tomorrow. So Lord, (laughs) do your own due diligence and research because things we say today may be outdated by the time you listen to it. Wow. So we're recording uh, just for uh, intents and purposes. We are recording on Saturday, January 9th. 2021 that's wild and this uh this is slated to air in about a week and a half on today talks tuesday as well as pam's tax talk tuesday so we'll make sure that we have pam's information in the show notes so be sure to follow her and be sure to get some of her amazing financial tips so you mentioned that you had to do like hours and hours upon reading about things that have happened uh since covid Uh, Has your business thrived in the midst of COVID because of a lot of the things that you mentioned, like the PPE, and you used a lot of acronyms. So can you break Mm -hmm. down a little of those acronyms and how you, your business may have thrived and how you help businesses um, get information so that they can get stimulated during this pandemic? Absolutely. So I mentioned PPP, which is the payroll protection program. I got to say it real slow. And then, (laughs) um, (laughs) so that's a loan uh, driven by the SBA. And then the SBA had another loan, the EIDL, which is the economic something disaster loan. And SBA is Small Business Association, correct? Correct. Yeah. So those were the business loans and programs and grants that they put together to help businesses thrive and survive during COVID. And so for me, it was super, super busy. Not only did they extend the tax deadline, so that was something in itself, but with these loans and grants came financial uh, requirements that businesses had to meet. So they needed their financial statements, their need, they needed their tax returns. And what I found and what I've always known, which is unfortunate, is a lot of businesses are not prepared with financial statements on a regular basis. So when it came to applying for these funds, they just weren't ready. So they would reach out to me in a panic, like, oh, I need my tax returns done and I need financial statements for two years or one year, what have it. So for me, it it was hard for me to really come to terms with the fact that these people didn't have that (laughs) but then it was also hard for me to say i have to charge you a premium because you need a rush knowing that 
times are hard. So it was very yeah. conflicting for me. So I was busy. I did grow in my business, but probably not as much as I could have if I were to charge normal prices, just because I, I'm an empathetic, empathetic entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, I can't charge you an arm and leg, even though I should, but you know, times were hard for everybody. So for me, I did what I had to do to kind of help the businesses who reached out to me. And that's, that's why I'm glad you're hosting this as well, because there's a second round of funding for businesses that's coming up and you have to show more financial documents to, to qualify. You have to show that your business decreased in revenue by 25% from a quarter in 2019 to the exact same quarter in 2020. So you need two years worth of financial statements, which a lot of businesses still don't have. How can a business collect that type of data? What are some strategy, strategies that they should do to organize themselves? Yeah, sure. One is to have a separate business bank account. So that makes it a lot easier to find all of the transactions that flow in and out of your business. Two is to have an accounting software. QuickBooks is the most highly known one, but then there's FreshBooks, Waze, and some other options as well. And if you sync your business bank account to those softwares is automatically pulling in those transactions. So it makes it easy to generate these type of reports. And I tell business owners all the time, if you stay ready, you never have to get ready. So, you know, <laughs> now is the time to get those processes and systems in place. So in the rare case, something else does happen in the world, you're ready. Yeah. So an Excel spreadsheet wouldn't cut it. You know, not really. Um, <laughs> a lot of people do start there and I'm not knocking people for where they have to start at, but it's not going to generate those accounting reports that a bank would need or that a lender would need to get you the funds. So, you know, if, if you are where you are and, and a spreadsheet is fine, maybe it's time to, to upgrade. To upgrade a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so basically in the midst of these businesses, uh, needing economic relief, you are being so em em empathetic that you are giving them economic relief on your business um, because of the um, complexity of the things that you had to do, you would normally charge higher. So yeah. in the end, Pam, you're going to be blessed. Don't <laughs> worry. Okay. Yeah, I feel it. I feel it. And, you know, I, I did what I had to do. And I saw a lot of people who just still weren't prepared and ready and missed out on those funds. So Hopefully this message will get people prepared now so you can get the second round of funding. Um, but in addition to that, it's just people were calling me about the stimulus check. I have no control over the stimulus check. <laughs> Pam, you got to know the answers. You was in Forbes you know, magazine. They like, where's my money? I don't know. I didn't even get mine yet. You know, so. <laughs> so people have several questions, I, you know, floating around the stimulus. Uh, and one of those questions is, will I owe the IRS with my stimulus check funds? That is a great question. And the answer is no. So how they set up the stimulus check is to make it almost like a credit on your taxes, but we just got it in advance. So if you did not receive the stimulus check yet, which I think will go into why you haven't, let your tax preparer know so they can put that on your tax return for this coming tax season and you'll get that credit then. Um, additionally, if you didn't get enough money in your stimulus check, let's just say you had a baby or something, you're supposed to get that extra money, mm -hmm. that will be kind of trued up with your tax return as well and you'll get that extra refund or extra credit in your tax return. Will the stimulus, so for the people who didn't get it and they tell you their tax preparer, will it affect the regular refund that they were going to get in general? Or it would actually it increase it. If they were to get an in, a refund normally, it mm -hmm. would increase it by what you should have received from the stimulus check. From the stimulus check. So many people were saying that they were only getting $600. How is the $600 given? And is it based on how many children or dependents that you have? So are we talking about the second rounds? Because the, the, Yes, the second rounds. Okay, yeah. So the first round, people got $1,200. The second round that you should have received or should be receiving by January 15th is $600. Okay. And if you do have dependents and children under age 17, you'll get extra funds on top of that, another $600. Um, if you're married and file joint, you'll get 
the $1,200. So that's kind of how the, the money is allocated and the dollar amounts for the second round. If you do not get it by January 15th, however, you will just have to talk to your tax preparer and say, I didn't get the stimulus check for the second round. And then that's when it will be kind of credited on your tax return. And why have some people not received their STEMI? Because uh, people is wild and out. They're making memes. Yeah. I, some, some of these people wanted to storm in with the trees. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think one person did. You saw that meme with that guy just standing there. One black man. <laughs> he was just standing there looking around like, y'all owe me some money. <laughs> so it, it's a couple reasons. And I, I do want to preface it with saying the IRS is so behind just based on everything that's happening with the coronavirus, the first stimulus check, everything. Like I think they said their mail system is behind months. Okay. So they're, they're out of order in that. So office. we need to give, extend a little grace to them because it's out of their control. A little bit, you know, it's, okay. it's still the IRS. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. another reason is maybe you did not file your tax returns, your 2019 tax returns mm. to either update your bank account information, your address or anything like that. So if you do typically see receive direct deposit and your bank account information is incorrect, mm. that could be a reason you did not receive the stimulus check and then they'll try to send it by mail. Um, another thing that I've But then the post office is acting a plum fool. Okay, seriously. <laughs> I shipped a package on December 19th that the receiver have not received yet. <laughs> I went to the post office last week and I almost caught a case of it. Well, actually earlier this week, I almost <laughs> caught a case. I said, who oh, Lord, <laughs> cameras are out. So I don't want to lose my job, but okay. Yeah, yeah. So the USPS, we got the IRS behind. We got USPS behind. What else? Um, so a lot of people who may go to tax preparers and get their refund or their bank, hold on, let me slow down, their tax preparation fees taken out of their refund. So for a tax preparer that's called like a bank product, that could be another reason why people have not received their tax return because it's going to another bank account first. And so that could slow down the process also people who get those um tax advance loans and things like that don't do it don't first of all don't <laughs> like the interest rates high you're paying a lot of fees on that and you know if you need the money you need the money and if you have to you have to but just try not to like, it's just a terrible idea to do right Pam? it's like those cash advance loans those interest rates are like 300 percent or something like that so they're but like loan sharks without killing you. Well, yeah, but they're killing it, it you. It should be illegal. In some states, it is illegal. Okay. Uh, but so people who do those, it could also hinder or slow down the stimulus check as well. So those are the main reasons people may not have received it. You know, you mentioned people not updating their information. I work in uh, at higher education. And I see people do that often. They miss out on vital information because they do not notify um important powers that be to get the information that they need to move forward. So if you're listening to this podcast, if you've changed your phone number, your address, you've changed, as Pam mentioned, your bank account, make sure you up, update those things and know, notify the proper channel so that you can conduct business in a timely, orderly, and on-time manner. That is very important, Pam. I'm so glad that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we're in the midst of a financial crisis this is we haven't seen since in our lifetime us being born in the 80s late 80s since uh the crash of 2008 and this seemed to have hit worse because sickness was tied into it and things of that nature so how can listeners prepare themselves financially in case another windfall happens not just business but just an individual regular joe on the street yeah, um, the first thing is to set up an emergency savings account and build that up to where it can support three to six months of your living expenses. So in the rare case, something like this happens again, you lose your job, which millions of Americans lost their job, that they at least have some cushion there. Um, that's, that's probably the first and most important step. And if you can extend it beyond six months, because here we are, COVID happened in March, we thought we'd be back to work by the summer. Yeah. 
and it's almost a year later and it's still people out of work. So that would be the first step is to build up that savings account. Don't touch it. Don't have a debit card for it. Just put money over there and, and build that up because we don't know when this will happen again. And like you mentioned, when it happened in 2008, we were fairly young. We didn't require much, you know, like right. <laughs> our living expenses weren't that bad. But now at the age we are, people have families and things like that to support and it, it hit hard. So that would be the first step. And then second, you know, I'm not a financial advisor or anyone that that knows how to invest or anything like that. But investing and, and growing your money and, and letting it work for you is definitely something to think about. It's risky though, because the stock market can crash. And that's really what happened in 2008 when people lost a lot of that money, but it's something you can set aside that can grow in addition to just keeping something in a savings account and it's not growing. So right. those are a few things to really start thinking about and preparing for. Um, and then also, I am not the person or business owner that says everyone needs to be an entrepreneur. Everyone needs to quit their job. That's not who I am. Because <laughs> that's not I'm what everybody's like, here for. <laughs> but yeah, we talked about this the other day, which leads me <laughs> to my next question regarding the STEMI. Yeah. Because people are out of damn control. <laughs> okay. And one of the things that people are encouraging people to do with their STEMI is to purchase an LLC. It's all, you need to buy it. You need to get an LLC. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to start a business. It is not everybody's ministry. It's not. To be a business owner. It's I'll not. be the first to say, you know, um, I'm trying to get my podcast in order as a business or LLC, but that I, it's, it's like a foreign language to me. I don't really understand it. I know how, I, I know that I want to deliver information to people. If, if I'm able to monetize off of it, that's fantastic. But I'm not, uh, I'm not business savvy, you know, mm -hmm. there's a, there's people for that, but everybody is not meant to do it just because you sold tacos out of your house <laughs> does not make you <laughs> have the business acumen that you think that you have. You don't have it. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. And so I say that with love. <laughs> okay, so the LLC, people are telling people just buy the LLC, um, charge everything, everything you charge, charge it to your LLC so that you can flip your money and that you can be millionaires. All these people that are giving this advice, Pam, by the way, are not millionaires. Well, you know. <laughs> so tell us about that, the whole LLC thing. Please give us some really good advice about that. First of all, the price of an LLC varies per state. So if you're, if you live in California, that stimulus ain't even going to support that LLC because that's like $800. It won't. Yes. <laughs> and it was floating around that it would just be a measly $150. $150. I don't like how people, it's, it's like they talk down to people. I never want to talk down to, you know, my listeners, my guests or anything. When they say like, all you got to do is this and it's, and y'all not doing this. And this is why you're in the state that you're in. It's not mm -hmm. that simple as just a measly 150. And it's to not. somebody, 150 is not measly. Right, exactly. And, and like we mentioned before, it's not just 150. It depends on what state you're in. Like California is 800. Another state is like 300. So it's not like that. And so it's, it's people who talk down on people who talk the loudest that don't know what they're talking about. So... That's that. Um, <laughs> and, on that. And like you said, entrepreneurship is not for everyone, but I will say multiple streams of income, however you can get it, should be. If you have a side hustle, if you do sell tacos and you make them real good, like the Flint tacos we grew up on, you can do that. <laughs> it it's a, it may not be. Yeah, Friday. <laughs> um, it's not a business, so to speak. It may be a hobby, but it brings in that extra income that you could pay a bill, a light bill, a phone bill, or something like that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be an LLC. And when you are an LLC, you can't put everything that you spend on that LLC. That's illegal. <laughs> like, Say it again for the people in the front and the back, Pam. You cannot put your personal lifestyle under an <laughs> LLC. You just can't do it. Like That is illegal. And if you do start a business, that's fine, congratulations, but you need to operate it as a business, get you a business bank account, 
your business expenses can go under that LLC, but your personal lifestyle cannot. That is called piercing the corporate veil, commingling funds. It is illegal and it's risky. Fraudulent. Yeah. Fraud. <laughs> Pam is trying to get y'all not to go to prison. It's Please don't go to prison. Offense. And I want y'all to know, as we saw before our eyes, if you are this color, <laughs> okay? you will be charged a federal federal offense. I know if your, your, your cousin was doing it and they got over it and Sharonda and Karen and all of them somehow got over the system, you won't be so lucky. My mom yeah. used to always tell me, today you can't do what everybody else do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> I'm going to say this too. It, it has been proven. It has been said. The IRS is increasing how many small business owners they're auditing their tax returns by 50 percent let that sink in say it one more time 50 percent increase of small business audits and who you think they're gonna go after who's gonna be first in line <laughs> <laughs> and i'm just okay. saying that to say get your life in order stop listening to these twitter um entrepreneurs <laughs> everybody tell you how to do it they never did it okay <laughs> like <laughs> Stop listening to social media experts. I mean, literally find you someone like Pam, the CPA, who knows what they're talking about, who studies the tax laws, who studies things about small businesses because they deal with small businesses on a regular basis and not just their business where someone may be practicing some illegal things and not out of maliciousness, but just because they don't know and they are unaware. So always get with an expert. Uh, Pam, you mentioned that things can um, change by the time this airs. So uh, before I always want to know before we, um, you know, get off this, this wonderful talk, what are some things that happened last year tax wise that have changed this year, so our listeners can know and be prepared for that any significant changes. Yeah, um, outside of the stimulus check and that credit, I can't really think off the top of my head a lot of significant changes that may have occurred. I will say this, though, people who receive the unemployment and that extra money, you're going to get taxed on that. So that's going to hurt. And people are going to really feel that come this tax time. And no one mentioned that when they say, you know, extra 600, extra 300. Yeah. Yeah it's going to get taxed and that, that can hurt a lot of people too. So I just want people to be prepared for that. Um, Wait a minute. Let's yeah. rewind it a little bit. So the people who were unemployed, they got, maybe they got laid off mm -hmm. and they were on an extension of the unemployment benefits. Mm -hmm. They will be taxed. Yeah, that's taxable income. And they may have taken taxes out of that money, but usually it's only like 10%, which is not enough to cover your tax bracket. So I just really want people to be prepared for that. Wow. I'm so glad that you shared that because I know several people were really riding that wave. Some mm -hmm. were riding the wave because they literally had to. And some mm -hmm. were just like, I don't want to go back to work. I don't even want to try to apply to mm -hmm. ride the wave. And lo and behold, the IRS said, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> You're gonna and, and that's not, it's not anything new. People who usually file unemployment outside of a pandemic have to pay taxes on that too but now it's that extra income and it, it's that extra reliance that we saw on it during COVID that it, it may shock a few people. Well thank you Pam it's always a pleasure to have you on before you go do you want to give any final remarks to the listeners out there um, what, um, to hold them over until we talk again? Yeah sure um, just for everyone who's listening I know it's been a hard year. Let's extend grace to everyone, especially our small business owners, because with everything, it's been an increase in, you know, supporting black owned businesses. However, several of us are solopreneurs. We're doing the marketing, the finances, the sales, the customer service and everything. So please extend grace to people because we're all going through a pandemic, but let's just continue to save, be smart, support black owned businesses and, and, you know, we've seen people thrive during a pandemic. So it's definitely possible we've seen what we can do as a collective people. And let's just continue to do that outside of a pandemic. And let's just make that our normal practice and not our protest. 
I love that, Pam. That is very good. Continue to support small businesses. I love how you said extend grace. Um, you and I are both avid hoop mobbers. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of people are getting upset with the solo entrepreneurs for their deliveries not coming on time and all of these things. As well, that's we USPS' the, fault. <laughs> yes, as we said on the top of this talk, that USPS is, you know, the, the middleman between your order and your product. So please extend that grace. Pam, how can we follow you on social media? Yes, you can find me always on Instagram at Pam the CPA. Um, that's probably the best and most popular way to contact me. So Pam the CPA on Instagram. You can go to PamTheCPA.com and reach out and connect. We thank you, Pam. And True Today Talks Fashion, it is your time to give your shout out. So who are you shouting out on today? You know, we from Flint. We already mentioned that. So we got to shout out Flint. Um, we got to shout out our fiancés, like you mentioned, Terrence and Brandon. You know? <laughs> Thank y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all for putting up with us. We a lot, but we're worth it. We're, we're so worth it. And you know, timing is everything. <laughs> so. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, thank you, Pam. Thank you to my listeners who tuned in today. Please adhere to this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Tanae Talks Podcast. You can follow me at Tanae Talk at T-Y-N-E-E-T-A-L-K-S, www.tanaetalks.com. I'm on Linktree. Don't forget to purchase my book, um, this, uh, <laughs> The Easy Guide to Starting a Podcast, so that you can podcast like me. Have a wonderful evening and I hope you enjoyed this talk. Thank you so much, Pam. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.